Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner, part of Come On Now, the podcast. I am Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, your host, and I am here to talk UFC 304, which is less than 24 hours away. I meant to do this video a couple days earlier, but it's been a busy week for me. But I am putting this video in because this fight card excites me. But before we jump into it, thank you again for your support. Please continue to support our channel. Like, follow, subscribe, and share this video as we continue to grow our channel. UFC 304. I am stoked about it. I'm excited about it. I I, I can't wait for it. And it's funny because there's been so many other cards that people have been just such a lot more excited about. This fight card I've been waiting for. This is a card that I, I've really wanted to see because it's about damn time Bilal Muhammad gets his shot. It's just that simple. It's about damn time. About damn time. The, the fact of the matter is he's been overlooked. He's been disregarded. He's been cast aside. People think he's boring. People don't like him. Whatever the reason. Bilal Muhammad has earned this shot. He's earned this title fight. And you can say what you want about him. You might think he's boring. You might think whatever you want to think about him. Bilal Muhammad hasn't lost in five years. Dude hasn't lost in five years. And at the same time, his the, the fight that he had with Leon the first time ended with an eye poke. I thought he would have lost that fight, but he's a lot better than he was when they had that fight a few years back. Simple facts. Like he's, I mean, we can go look. Since his fight with Leon Edwards, which was on March 13th, 2021, he has beaten Damian Maya. He's beaten Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He has beaten Vincente Luque. Vincente Luque. He has beaten Sean Brady. He has beaten Gilbert Burns. Now, the Burns fight, Burns got hurt in the first round, but he won the fight. I mean, the guy has done everything he has been asked to do. 5-0 and oh, since that Leon Edwards fight. Before the Leon Edwards fight, Diego Lima. Sorry, that's Doug, Douglas Lima. That's Diego, That's the younger one. Let me see here. That's Douglas. Why do I get these guys confused? Diego Lima, yeah. Diego Lima. Douglas is the better one. I mean, the guy has been winning for quite some time. His last loss. His last loss. Was Vicente Luke, was it 16? Was it 16, his last loss? Let me confirm this. Yeah, my bad, folks. I just want to confirm it. His last loss was to Jeff Neal in 2019 by decision. The guy has done nothing but win. I mean, it was Vicente Luke was the loss before that. That was two, three years before that, two and a half years before that. The dude is winning, man. He has three losses. Three losses in his career. Alan Joban, Vicente Luque, and Jeff Neal. He's earned this fight. And, I mean, I don't know if he's going to win. I think people should be very – I think Leon Edwards should be taking this fight very seriously. Um, I hope he is because if he thinks he's just going to walk over this guy, I think he's, he's crazy. Um, Leon has gotten so much better over the years as well. His defense, takedown defense has gotten so much better. He's made a point to, like, put people – who are wrestlers on their backs, um, which I think speaks volumes for how much better he's gotten. You know, it's crazy because he was two minutes from losing the fight to Kamara Usman, and a head kick changed his the, traje the, the trajectory of his career. Confidence is totally different. He's, I mean, he's not a very arrogant, boastful guy, but his confidence is on a, on a is on a very, very high level. I think that's a big, I think that's huge. If you're confident, I mean, it makes a major, major difference. But I'm excited about this fight. It's a, it's a battle of styles. Um, I'd be intrigued to see if Muhammad is going to stand with him or if he's going to go straight looking for takedowns because that's probably his best chance to win. But Muhammad has come a long, long, long way. Um, and he's taking this fight in in England, um, so in, in the UK. So I mean, it's a uh, it's big time. It's big time. My projection: I I think Leon Edwards wins the fight via decision. Um, 
but I think it'd be a very close fight. Would not shock me at all if Bilal Muhammad won the fight. This main card is fun, but I'm going to jump off the main card real quick. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in the UFC, but they moved to the early prelims. Mohamed Mokaev versus Man Manel Kapp. These two guys had a fight in the in the hotel. Um, apparently, there, there there's been some issues with these two dudes. Um, the cop cut Mokaev's head just weeks before the fight. Um, you know, there's rumors of weight. So th this is a fight that should be on the main card, but it's on the early prelims. It, it you know I don't always watch the early prelims, but because this fight's on the early prelims, prelims, I have got to watch the early prelims. Um, why I don't always watch them? Because I mean, sitting in front of your television for six and a half hours is a lot. A lot is a long time. So, um, yeah, it's a it's an early prelim fight. It's a it's the fourth fight on the early prelims. It's not even the main fight of the early prelims, which is even crazier to me. But that is a fight right there. Holy shit, Mokai! I think the winner of the winner of those two guys will end up getting a title shot. Um, I, I really think that's in the next, the winner of that fight is the next title shot. You know, Mokaev is on the last side of his contract. Could be part of it. Um, but cop is a crazy guy. Mokaev is undefeated. I'm excited about this fight. I want to see new blood fighting for titles. Although I know that cop has already fought Pantoja. Um, his and but he's won five straight since he fought Pantoja and lost by decision. So excited for this! Really excited for this fight. Um, we shall see what happens. I like Mokaev in this fight. Uh, UFC is going to have to resign him after this fight. I mean, I think they'd resign him regardless, but you have to resign him because he's your next contender. He is. If he wins. He's the next. I think both these guys are the next contender, but. I think he wins this fight. Jumping into the main card, though, overall, Arnold Allen and Giga Chikadze. It's been a minute since we've seen Giga Chikadze. When did he last fight? He last fought in August of 2023. It's close to a year. He beat um, Alex Caceres, Bruce Leroy. Before that, you know, he hadn't fought for what, 18 months when he, when he got battered by Calvin Cater. Um, but Chikadze was long, widely considered a major contender at this, at this weight. And we're going to, we're going to see if he can turn it around at featherweight and um, get back on the, the wagon and see if he can make himself a contender again. Cause hell of a fighter, Ar Arnold Allen, his career has kind of gone in the wrong direction. Um, you know, after he beat Cater in October of 2022, he's looking at a fight with Max Holloway and Max Holloway busts his ass, you know, um, he busts his ass and then he fights Evloev and he loses that fight too. So he's coming off of two losses in a row. He's now sitting at 19 and three, you know, he was 19 and one. Had he beaten Max Holloway, he might've been looking at a title shot. He's fighting his way back up. I think this is a hell of a fight for both guys. Right now, Island's ranked sixth and Chikadze is ranked tenth. It's an exciting, exciting fight to me. I'm excited. I'm, I'm stoked for it. I'm stoked for this fight. These guys are gonna throw down. Um, I think Chikadze gets the win. I, I like Chikadze in this fight. He's the underdog, but I like Chikadze in this fight. Bobby Green. Oh, I'm sorry. He changed his name officially. His name is King Green now. King Green versus Patty Pimblett. These two have been talking a lot. You know, Patty's done has been saying that he almost didn't take this fight and he was going through some stuff and whatever. I'm sure he probably was just too damn big and needed to cut a truckload of weight because he always eats himself in over 200 pounds between fights. This is Patty Pimblett's biggest test his biggest test to date and i'd be shocked if he won he is the underdog in this fight 
I am not, I have never really been truly impressed with Patty Pimlet. I thought he lost to Jared. I thought he lost to Gordon. The fight with, with Ferguson was not impressive. I mean, he has won one, two, three, four, five. He's won five straight in the UFC. Is that all his fights in the UFC? Yeah, so he's five and zero in the he's five and zero in the UFC. He hasn't really beaten any one of major. No, I mean let's be real. Tony Ferguson is washed, but that wasn't an impressive performance against Tony Ferguson. Nothing was impressive about that win. And I thought he lost to Jared Gordon. I think Bobby Green knocks him out. Flat out. I think Bobby Green knocks him out. I think it's a fun fight, exciting fight. I think Bobby Green puts him out. But if Patty Plummet beats Bobby Green, it's big for him. I mean, we are – she's saying Bobby Green. I apologize. King Green. If, if, he, if, he, if he beats King Green, who's in the top 15, it, it jumps Pimblet into the rankings. It will absolutely jump him into the rankings and set him up for a bigger fight. I think Pimblet's a long way. Pat, Patty's a long way away from being a real contender of anything. I don't think he's. I don't think he's committed to this sport. I think he enjoys the attention, but I don't think he has the commitment necessary to become a great, great fighter. That said, this is a big test for him, and I expect it to be a fun, exciting fight. But I expect King Green, King Green to put him out round two. Let's jump into the co-main event, realistically the real heavyweight championship fight, because we know that John Jones and Steve Bay, if that fight ever even happens, neither guy will fight the winner of this fight. They just won't. They won't fight the winner. Tom Aspinall and Curtis Blades. Curtis Blades is dangerous. I don't think people understand how dangerous he is. He, Despite being a plus 280 underdog, Aspinall's a big favorite at minus 355. Blades beat Aspinall. I mean, it was an injury. It wasn't really a win, but it is on the record. So it is a win for Curtis Blades. Curtis Blades' performance against Jalton Almeida was huge. Absolutely huge. The fact that he got taken down in that fight in the first round and rather got dominated by Almeida in round one of that fight. I was at that fight card. I was in Miami. It was, but then in the next round, Curtis Blades put him out, finished him, finished him. And I, I think that was monster for him, considering he'd come off a, a loss to Pavlovich, knockout loss to Pavlovich. Let's be real. Curtis Blades' only losses are to two of the hardest punchers on the, in the, on the planet. The two losses to Nganu and the loss to Pavlovich. He otherwise, this man beats everybody. He's beaten Derek. He, the, I mean, I'm sorry. He lost to Derek Lewis as well. Did he? I thought he beat Derek. Oh, he lost. He, he lost to Derek Lewis as well. Yeah. So there you go. Another. Yeah. The punchers, Derek Lewis and Ganu, and Pavlovich. He's beaten Rosenstrike, Dykaus. He. I mean, he has the win over, over Aspinall. He beat Volkov. Volkov has always been so good. I mean, Dos Santos, he's beaten everybody. He's, I mean, it's he's very dangerous. This fight can go one of two ways. It's a long, drawn-out wrestling match, and Blades wins. Or Aspinall pulverizes him in the first round. It's one of two ways. That's the way I see this fight going. If Curtis Blades can avoid getting put out early, he'll win the, he will win the fight. Yeah, I said it. If he can avoid getting put out early, that first round is the, is the key. Get through the round one. If he does that, he wins the fight. Because I think he's going to have the better gas tank. He's the better wrestler by far. By far. I don't, I don't care that Aspinall says if he fights Alex Pereira, he would run across and rugby tackle him. This is not the same beast. 
Curtis Blades is a better wrestler than Tom Aspinall. And I, I, I think it's going to be a, bat, a, a, a fight of style. As most fights are you know, about styles. But I think you have a situation here where you have a true style matchup. And if Blades can escape round one, breathing, <laughs> alive, awake, I think he drags his fight into a, into a long five-round fight. And he wins by decision. Who knows? But that's what makes this card so exciting to me. You have a lot of what-if situations here. So, yeah, I have Leon. I got Curtis Blades by via decision. I got King Green via second-round KO. I got Giga Chikadze. I would say that's going to be a decision. Uh, I didn't mention the, the Christian Duncan fight versus Gregory Rodriguez. I don't even know why that's on the main card. That should not be on the main card. It should be the Mokayev cop fight. I got Mokayev in that fight. Um but that's what makes this card so because it's it, all these fights are all these big fights in this card are battles of style, man. And, and I think they can, I think all of them can go either way. It would not shock me if Bilal, it would not shock me if Bala Muhammad won. It would not shock I me. Mean, it wouldn't shock most people if Tom Aspinall won. It wouldn't shock me if Patty. It wouldn't shock me if Patty Pimlet won. Because King Green realistically is a journeyman fighter who's ranked fifteenth and probably shouldn't be ranked fifteenth. He 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 loses. He's thirty two and fifteen. He's lost a lot of fights. He's at this point in his career where he just fights to fight because he likes fighting. Arnold Allen, Giga Chikatsa, he can go either. Way. All these fights can go either way. But I'm really stoked for this fight card. I think it's gonna be a fun card. And if you have, if you if you weren't planning on watching it, you better because I think this is the best card of the summer. Realistically, I think this is the best card we have this summer. And. um if Bilal Muhammad wins, oh boy. <laughs> if Bilal Muhammad wins, he's going to shut up a lot of people. And here's the question now. If he wins, does Leon Edwards get an immediate rematch? No. Fuck no. Leon Edwards has two title defenses. Do we, can we stop with the immediate rematch thing? Can we stop with that? If Bilal Muhammad wins, I don't know who he fights next. But there, there better not be an immediate rematch because I'm tired of watching these these immediate rematches, delays of division, the whole night. The fact that this fight with 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 Bilal and Leon has taken so long to make, it's irritating because this fight should have happened three months ago. Um, I get why it's been wait, waited they waited for um the UK, but there's one thing I do want to say. I feel bad for these fighters overall because the time can. Cons- the time situation is outrageous. I feel bad for the fighters. I feel bad for the fans. The same way you have the fight card in Dubai, in uh, Abu Dhabi or wherever in the Middle East take place at 2 o'clock in the afternoon in the States, this fight card should not be at 10 o'clock Eastern time. It, it shouldn't. It, it just shouldn't. Like, having people... What is the time right now in London? It's 4.30 in the morning. 4.39. It is 11.39 Eastern time. I'm actually recording 11.39 p.m. Eastern time right now in South Florida. It's a five-hour difference. So at 10 o'clock at night, the fight card in London, in in Manchester, starts at 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 o'clock in the morning. I mean... These guys, their sleeping schedules are a mess. The main event's going to start at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Can you imagine as a fan, if you went to Vegas or New York or L.A. or Miami or Atlanta or Dallas, any major American city, and you had to start watching the main card at 3 o'clock in the morning? No one would watch it. People would be asleep. And I get why they do it in the UK, how they do it, because they don't pay for pay-per-view as far as I know. I don't think they pay for for pay-per-view there. They can watch fights like normal television there. Pay-per-view is seemingly more as an American thing, a thing in the United States. So the pay-per-view dollars come from here. But I I mean... (sighs) I I think that you risk having fights that don't live up to what they could potentially be because 
these guys have to totally adjust their schedules to sleep. To fight at 6 o'clock in the morning, it's bananas. It's absolutely bananas. And the, the fans, these people are troopers because to, sit at, to be at a fight card at 6 a.m., I mean, it is absolutely freaking nuts. I think the UFC should be fighting the same way they do when they put it um when they put on uh the Abu Dhabi cards or you know whatever like they just did in Saudi Arabia. Put that crap in the daytime in the states because I don't think it's fair to the fighters to have to go through that type of body change. <laughs> like and it actually Bilal Muhammad is in a better situation with the time situation because he's really going to be fighting regular time than like as if he was in Chicago. I think because I think you know, he lived, I think he's in Chicago. Same as if he's wherever he lives in the U.S. Like it's it's the time difference makes it is it doesn't it doesn't hit him the way it would hit Leon Edwards to fight at six o'clock in the morning UK time. But that's all I got. I wonder what your thoughts are. Let me know who you think is going to win the fight, win these fights. I mean, are you watching it? Are you not? But leave a comment. Like, subscribe, and follow it. Come on now, baby.